Welcome everybody to the best podcast in the world with the best guest in the world. Today, we're going to have episode two of Coffee with Branch. My name is Nick Tibuzek and with me there is the only hybrid god in the world, Branch. Branch. Hey, what's up guys? <laughs> Branch is always like... Oh, fuck. What the fuck is that guy talking about me here? <laughs> <laughs> literally, literally. I'm, I'm always thinking, what the, what the fuck's up Nick, Nick going on about right now? I have no idea. <laughs> but I'm just going to join in on it. Fuck it. Let's start. <laughs> so I just called you the god of hybrid trading, but that's not true because you're fucking weak. I'm a weak-ass hoe, man. I'm a weak-ass hoe. I've got, I got a lot of work to do, bro. I'm feeling feeble right now, man. Yeah, yeah, I see that, I see it. And for, for everybody who's just listening and not watching, I see gray hairs on Ranjit's beard right here. And I turned 30 this year, bro. What'd you expect? You know how it is, man. Hey, but you did say also when you when you, when it was your 30th birthday, you, uh, you also saw one white hair, right? Or gray yeah, hair? There was a gray hair right here on the left side of my head. And I saw oh, that. Oh, man. I feel old. Oh, man. This, This is the age we become a man. <laughs> Finally. I thought that that Finally. Turned, turned 18. Crazy, right? Oh, fucking hell. But now there's a there's, there's so many years of sports now into this. What would you say? What, what, what is the thing? What let you turn into the hybrid thing coming away from, from the calisthenic side? I, I think I just gave more of a... Um, It was, I was doing a little bit of more stuff when I was doing calisthenics, but then kind of calisthenics took over my, my training at a certain time. Um, but then I was also, the thing is, I was always trying to do some other stuff as well at the same time. I wasn't sticking to just calisthenics. So I did make the, the hybrid thing a little bit more well known for people that, although calisthenics is, is good, it's a small percentage of strength, strength training, right? And then... I made a mistake of, of giving my all to it and um, at a certain time for a few years. And don't get me wrong, I got to a really good level, but at the end of the day, the, the point of hybrid was uh, kind of like a philosophy that, yeah, you might be good at calisthenics, but lifting weights is always going to be, I don't know, it's always going to be the king, you know what I mean? Like lifting weights is always going to be the king. And it's just like adopting that into your methodology of whatever kind of style of calisthenics you do. I think a lot more people now are enjoying hybrid style of training. I think it's 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 quite more well known. I don't think it's really hybrid. I think it's the way most people should have trained at the start. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think it's just people becoming more aware of right. It's not bad to do squats or deadlifts or lift weights while you do calisthenics. And why wouldn't you want to? You can you can really do everything. So it 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 was that mindset of saying you know with most people saying body weight only we don't need weight and all that that's that's good in its own respect but reality is that most people do calisthenics only in the field of strength are pretty much weak nothing nothing beats pressing overhead and deadlifting and squatting and if you want to bench and you know adding some weights with it and you will feel probably a lot better lifting weights so as an example one of my clients um who's was pretty much new to hybrid style. He's only been doing calisthenics for about a year, but he also said that in the UK scene of calisthenics, they do not like people lifting weights. So That's it's kind of one of them things, even in the UK scene, it's like, although I'm not doing calisthenics, I still keep up to date with what's going on with, with the calisthenics stuff. And he was saying that it's very much frowned upon. It's not, it's not a good thing if you're like lifting weights and doing calisthenics, like they keep that kind of mindset still, you know? Super interesting because from from what I see in, in yeah the the German speaking area, loads of people do a lot more weight training now. As it got a little bit cultivated, but I think that comes from especially let's call it the influencers in the German speaking area. A lot more people just do that because they're longer into it. And they do it, so the younger people also see it and adapt to it. But 
what what I always miss with most people is exactly what you said. There is more to strength training than just calisthenics. But on the other hand, I also viewed from that side, there is more to strength training than just moving weights. And that's another extremely important point to me. And it always has been because for me, it was always like, you know, I was in the army. So carrying weight <laughs> was pretty normal to me always. And I always had to be able to move my body as well. So both of these mindset things always influenced my personal style of training. So for me, it was always important to move weights, but to be able to move my body as well. So um, what, what I see from both sides of that is all the calisthenics guys who are completely into, we don't even use any weight. And then there's the other side of the classic strength fitness people, I don't know how to call them, um, who barely can do proper body weight training. And this starts with the easy stuff like push-ups and pull-ups in a technical good way. How do you see that? I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I fully agree with you there. The, the thing is, right, the, the calisthenics scene as an example, let's take an example of like CrossFitters, right? The calisthenics uh, scene, the people who really do calisthenics, like you see these kind of videos on social media where there's like, they, they get a video of like a CrossFitter doing like kipping pull-ups, right? And then they and then they say, this is how not to do pull-ups. And then uh, they, they show their pull-ups. But not I'm not taking the side of CrossFit or calisthenics in any kind of way. I'm just saying that, even if you take if you take a really strong athlete of CrossFit and you put him into a, a like a, a strength, I don't know, like something like a circuit where you have to where you have to do one movement at each time, right? And you take some one of the best guys who just does strictly calisthenics. Well, in the field of strength, a CrossFitter is way better than most calisthenics athletes. I mean, mo the thing is with calisthenics, and don't get me wrong, I made many mistakes in calisthenics, right? If I could take it back, I would have done things a lot different. And that's what I teach most of my clients now. And uh, whoever wants to really get into calisthenics, I teach them still that old principle of, of make sure you're doing things properly. But if I could take things back is one of, one of the things is like, I wouldn't have spent so much time just trying to work on, although I didn't uh, do much skills, mostly calisthenics is skills. That's what most, most people don't, don't understand. Like the, if you take a regular person and they're introduced to calisthenics, they're going to be really fascinated by like the handstand, the muscle up, things which are not, they are kind of like strength moving, but you've got so many other things involved in much like a balance, I don't know, technique, timing. There's loads of other things um, involved with, with those strength movements, example, right? But it kind of, um, one of the things is like, if you take a, if you take a CrossFitter and you, uh, you know, if you have to do deadlift squats in the, in the general perspective of strength and CrossFit and go, okay, maybe they do bad pull-ups and other things are quite bad, but their, their methodology, okay. Of doing every exercise is good. Like the, at least they're trying to do every exercise. It doesn't mean they are great at it or it, you don't have to be, but if you take a calisthenics person, mostly all they're really doing is pulling in that same variation dipping always in the same variation and just skills so you're very limited in calisthenics you are very limited and i think if you're doing calisthenics for like five to you know 10 years you're naturally going to go into weights and do stuff a little bit different i don't think there's many people that unless you talk about people like in new york and you know where calisthenics is still prevalent where, which i think real calisthenics is where they don't really train with a methodology they just go crazy on the bar for a few hours i think that still exists in some places apart from that a lot of places now have adopted powerlifting style into calisthenics right like one rep maxes and three rep maxes and that still has a has its pros and cons but in general like you do see a lot of calisthenics people still to this day not think not thinking on the terms of like oh weights is good and we should be mixing it with with our calisthenics you do see a lot of people still saying, um, you know, weights is bad. And I think that that's a really bad way to be at the, at the start. But I think most people do learn over a long time that it isn't bad. 
right? So if you take look, if you take a CrossFitter and you take a calisthenics, I'm, I mean, two of the, I, I mean, let's take two, uh, one athlete from each field, like the best, let's say top five guys. If you think of the word strength, you don't really see pull-ups in there. Do you? you don't really see muscle-ups and stuff. You don't. And, and that, that's what I learned after a while. It is a part of it, but what I mean is like, having a broader variety of strength is way better. And you get, you get to train so many more things and variations. And I think you look at it a little bit different. I mean, when you're just, when you just kind of like put yourself into this little box of calisthenics, it's very dogmatic and it's like, oh, you're not allowed to do anything else to be real calisthenics. And, and don't get me wrong. I did come from that, that um, kind of that era of calisthenics where, you, you know, that was a different time of calisthenics, but at least I made the mistakes not to like pass on to other people. I'm trying to tell people different. I wouldn't say, you know, when I'm training clients and people say, I want to just train body weight. I'm like, don't make me, don't, don't make the mistakes that I did. You know, you, you got, time to really develop now you you want to be doing some weights as well as calisthenics mm. Mm. I'm, I'm, i completely agree with that as um <clears throat> another thing that comes with that bigger problem of that is a lot of calisthenics athletes are also very afraid of gaining weight and also training legs because it will kill the aesthetics and From one perspective, I do understand that as, of course, the heavier your legs are, the, the heavier a leather gets. That's classic physics. I mean, I do get that. But as, you know, as someone who, who's, for a calisthenics guy, a pretty tall guy, and I'm a very heavy guy, for me, progression was always very slow. Always, as, as, the, as it's normal for, for a bigger and taller guy in that area. So I was always very patient with all the progressions that I had. And I, for me, I was, I, I never came to the idea I want to skip the, the leg part of training for the sake of skills, as for me, I was always patient enough because I always learned to be patient when it comes to that. Um, yeah, I, I never, never had the thing of, yeah, I skip it to be faster in the other stuff. As I think that's one of the main problems. And I still think to the, to the, to the day to day, you still can make so much progress while doing squats and deadlifts, which is something I absolutely recommend to everybody to do. As to my, to, in, in my opinion, it's extremely important to load the spine as a human, as that, that's something that just keeps you healthy for the rest of your life. You gotta do that. You gotta put weight on your body to make the bones stronger, to make the spine stronger. And yes, you, you, you can kill yourself with that when you do it in a shitty way, but you, you can also kill yourself when you do a plant in a shitty way and rip your biceps off like every one of the biggest, bigger guy did. I mean, look at Adam Raw, look at Little Beast and all of them got injured with all that stuff. And everybody has their niggling pain things. So everybody's so scared of, I'm gonna kill my back and my knees with that stuff. I'm not gonna do that. And I think that's, a, that's an excuse of actually growing up and getting an adult in training. <laughs> It's a little bit harsh to say so, but that's my point of view. How do you, how do you view that, that point? No, I, I, I fully agree with you, Nick. I think, um... I think a lot of people are afraid because most, if you think about most people who start calisthenics, um, they do start because they're unconfident of walking in a gym. So sometimes maybe they find it better going to a park to train or, you know, they have a community of people that want to train with them. So, you know, introducing stuff like legs, I mean, you're not really going to do legs unless someone, someone brings a barbell to the park or something, but, you know, stepping foot in a gym for most people that do calisthenics is a, 
let's say it's a sin, right? It's it's bad for them, right? It's it's not good for the look of calisthenics or something, right? But realistically, like it's it's going to be a natural thing that happens. Um, that even if you think you're not going to want to be putting what it's kind of like the same thing. You're doing body weight dips, and then a few years or one year, you're you're, you're putting weight on the dip belt to do dips. Like it's a natural thing that adaption is going to happen after a while, right? So it's just it's one of them things like um, the calisthenic scene. I think has has gone more towards hybrid. If you th- if you think about also competitions, um, most competition like you won't see competitions now th- like they were. I think you know even freestyle is not as prevalent as it used to be. I think of the reps and sets, um, well reps and sets. I think more of a one rep max, three rep max, or kind of um, actually no, yeah, one rep max uh, competitions are more. They're more uh, prevalent now, so. I think, uh, yeah, it's it's a, it's a natural thing because like the competitions now, you've got what you've got a back squat. I think, yeah, you've got back squat weighted muscle up, right? Most competitions is a weighted dip and a weighted pull up. I think, I think it's on something. Like so so you can see even in competitions before it was like goblet squat, right? And now people are adding the back squat in. Uh, so that's that's really good to see. Um, that's really good to see that in competitions it is more that. But then again, kind of, it kind of brings me back to like the beauty of calisthenics. I don't think much, I don't think many people. Like I said it in my my last time we spoke. I don't think many people really do of what I view as calisthenics, right? Where the way I was brought up doing calisthenics, the way I, I did calisthenics. I don't think many people really do that style anymore. I think that style was a lot more. Obviously, there was no uh, programming, right? There, there was no programming in, in that kind of training, but that was the beauty of it. That was, that is what made calisthenics nice. Like you could go to the park and you could train for a few hours. Not saying it was good for you, but it was a. There was a time. There was a time that you could do that, right? And um, you could do like freestyle. You could do some weight. You could do body weight. You could do statics. Like that. I think that was the beauty of calisthenics. I think now. As, as an example, if I look on Instagram, all, all I can see now, and it, it's a good thing, but it's also a bad thing sometimes. Like, I think the beauty of calisthenics is gone because all you see now is like weighted dip one RMs. And I think there's so much more in, in like, you know, there's a bar, like I said last time, there's a bar. Let's see how, how sick you are. It's kind of like when calisthenics was first, going around like 10 years ago maybe 10 years ago it was like it was like um extreme bmx or skateboarding it was like a freestyle element of like how cool you was on the bar and and stuff like you could freestyle you could um do statics as i was saying you could do weighted it was just like here's a bar show me how good you are i think everything now is more um it's just about how much weight you can lift and don't get me wrong that that has its pros and cons at the same time that that's got a lot of pros but I think that the beauty of calisthenics really has gone. I think only a few re- a few places still only do it. Obviously, for myself, I used to do a lot of calisthenics as well. But you you move on and you learn to do other stuff. But you know, seeing new people that do calisthenics now will think that's calisthenics. I just don't think that's calisthenics. From what what I used to do as calisthenics, from the people that I used to train with and how we used to train, and you know, when we used to compete and if I'd go to another country, everyone would train pretty much similar and stuff like this. It was, it was a different era of calisthenics. And, and now it's more, it, I guess, even beginners, they just think about, like, I mean, one or two year, I've just had a person met, email me and he was talking about he's training for one or two years. He wants this much squat. He wants this much deadlift. I'm like, dude, slow down. Like, what's your base level? Like, what, what are you currently doing? Like, what's your experience? Have you got any injuries? Like people people just want to because they've seen so many of the influencers do like 100 kilo pull up and a 150 kilo dip they think that this is pretty much normal and what i want to get out there is like this is not normal this is like these are extreme level athletes right these are like top tier athletes you have to live breathe eat sleep shit this game to even get to like 100 kilo 120 kilo dip. you have to really be coached to a good degree and 
and um, really listen and take into account what your coach says. And you have to, you, ha- you can't just like think about doing that yourself in like one or two years. You have to see that. And most beginners that look at these extreme weights, as an example, they, they don't look at it as an experience level that that guy has already been training five to 10 years, maybe as an example, right? They might be training for five, not like just one or two years. And the goals that people have sometimes because like the because calisthenics has changed, it's not no more like the goal is like, oh, I want to be able to achieve like five rounds of 15 to 20 clean pull-ups first. It's like the goal is I want to be able to do a 75 kilo t- five rounds of five pull-ups. And I'm like, dude, you've lost the plot. Like this is extreme level. Just because it's more out there, yeah. it doesn't mean it doesn't, it, 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 it's a very extreme level. It, it's not saying like most people can do that. You know, it's like it, it, one last thing, Nick. It's like you remember, like deadlifting, three hundred kilo was insane. You know, and 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 now you see most top level powerlifters or most powerlifters can can deadlift three hundred, right? And and now it's like four hundred is the the like new goal for most people, or three fifty or something. Like, take that as an example. Is like before it was like doing ten. 10 like five rounds of 10 15 pull-ups was like clean that was like wow i want to i'm inspired to be able to do that but now it's like most people just see weight because that's all you see on social media you don't see the beauty of calisthenics anymore like you will just see either two things someone doing a heck of a lot of statics with no legs right you will see stick kids do 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 just planche and you can already see from that methodology, they're not trying to work to the next point, you know, doing legs and being able to do that isn't the next goal or something. Or you will see someone doing extreme weighted callus then, uh, weighted pull-ups and dips. So you get, you just get these two, there's no like, you don't see, and not that I'm a fan of it, you don't even see much freestyling anymore. Like I remember there was a time that freestyling had taken over calisthenics. It was like jumping around in the bar, spinning. and I don't even see much of that. All I see now on Instagram, whether people I follow or on my stories and whatever, it's like 85 kilo pull-ups, 120 kilo dips. Like that's, that's, that's normal now. And I think that that's great. But there is a certain time that stops. If you can't put it to the test, you have to go and compete. And this is what I always tell people. If you're going into these extreme levels, make sure you're competing. Don't just do it for the Instagram. Who really cares? Like You might as well go to competition and prove your prove your level or you know see people that are training on that kind of level as well people that are doing statics you can see people doing five rounds of one minute statics and that that falls too much into the gymnastics style so i think real calisthenics for me was always a bit of everything a bit of everything was always fun and you could even say that was a hybrid level of calisthenics how many people do you still see now who can do there's only probably a, a, a a uh, handful of people that you can you can see on um sorry there's a call there uh, so there was probably only a handful of people now you can see that do statics um and freestyle and can do a great like a, a, a comfortable amount of weighted reps right and i think you, you don't see much of this anymore like there's only probably five people absolutely get that um, what I found super interesting is how many, how many people underestimate this thing with the, the um, when, especially when it comes to, to, to this like 120 kg dip and uh, 85 kg um, pull up and stuff like that. How much time would it take you to get there? I mean, the top level athletes in the world are doing these numbers right now. And even though yeah. we have some people who, like like top five people, who are doing more than 120 kg in a dip or something. And yes, you, you see them winning the competitions. Yeah, they win the competitions for a reason, because they are the strongest. Because they are doing this for years now, you know? And that, that's something a lot of people very much misunderstand here that to get to that level, it took so much time to get there. Or that happens as well sometimes. They're just very, very gifted. Some people are just very gifted and they make that progress in just a, 
very short amount of time. It happens that way too, but most of the people that I work with are not that gifted and it takes a lot of time to get to the level where they would love to be at because they see it on the on the social media and I have the same experience like you. I always have to calm them down and tell them, oh, if you want to get to that level, we have to go for five years straight now. Five years straight. It's not that you're going to get it as a present or something. It's just not falling down from the sky. You got to work specialized for that thing right there. And as you said, if you really want to specialize on that, that's great. And then I would absolutely recommend to go to a competition. But be, because why, where's the point in specialization if you don't compete? I don't get that. Why, well, that, that. That's what I mean, yeah. That, yeah that, sorry, that, that is what I meant about, um, you know, a, a lot of people, which is in their own right. I mean, doing stuff for Instagram is great. But if you if you're already lim like um if you're specializing in like three things already right and you're and you're really good at them why don't you just compete instead of just doing it on instagram and showing it non-stop on instagram you might as well just compete and get your name out there even more i mean if you look at the top if you look at the top five guys right now i'm not sure who they are i know a few of them but because I've, I've not kept up i know like it's backy a few other guys right even um i think i don't think zod does much anymore um i think he does full-time powerlifting or he might come back to street lifting i'm not sure but if you look at the top five guys you you them guys have been around so they haven't actually been doing weighted calisthenics to an extreme for th for four three or four years i wouldn't say because they've been training for so long it's pretty much a new thing right whereas if you look at the beginners they think this is so they think this is where they started in terms of uh, they must have been doing weight for a long time. So they jump on weighted. But the base level of strength is something you can't skip. You cannot, you cannot skip that. That's something that you have to take into account that if you see the top five guys, you, if you look at their Instagram page, you will see a journey of how they started to where they were. They were doing so many different things in calisthenics at certain times. But because the street lifting thing took over, now they're doing that, but they already have an amazing base of it, right? So let's just look at injury. They're most likely not going to get injured. They don't have to kill themselves training as hard as the newcomers that want to get into hybrid lifting or street lifting and are really attacking. They haven't really got much more experience and they're attacking themselves to get to even half of this weight. And they're training three or four times as hard or as much, right? And then you think, well, these top five guys, they've been training for a long time. They've got years of experience. They know how to manage the fatigue management. They know how to take into account their programming. They know when to stop. They know if they're feeling you know, a little bit tired, they know to deload. These are things you have to build in experience. So most newcomers, when they want to go into hybrid lifting or street lifting, whatever you call it now for these competitions, they don't have as much as a base as these top five guys. So with having that base, there is so many pros you get. You so you you are ten you're you're already five to ten years ahead. With the with the new beginners, when they can only do you know ten pull ups, three I don't know three rounds of five to ten pull ups, and they're already putting on the weight. I mean, I see guys doing these muscle ups, and uh, you know, I see them doing body weight, and then they're saying, "All right, I'm going to go to weight next next month," and I'm thinking, "Dude, like th this is not." this is not as easy as like those guys show you because those guys have been in the game for five to 10 years. And the key is that of course, street lifting, th these competitions haven't even existed for four or five years. Have they, I'd say maybe three years. Not, not in that way. I think not in that way. They, they've existed, but I remember first it was like 32 kilo max dips and stuff. Now it's adopted to like the heavier weights. So the only guys that are really going to win that are the guys who have had experience in all those competitions where they went to like, those high rep competitions, weighted competitions. Now they're in this competition. They they've got they've built up so much more experience. So the new guys just want to be able to like do more than their body on their mind can really handle. And I don't think there's really much point of that. I think that is the beauty of it. The experience shows 
like when you see the top guys that are lifting like one like 40 to 170 dip i think maybe 140 to 170 that's like extreme elite level right i say to people like you have to realize that this is like you have to be your inches away from injury you have to be perfection you have to have mastered this like you are you are a master in your own right you have to be so so like skilled and you have to understand your body so well you go, like no one can just put 100 most people can't even put 70 80 kilo right you got to think 140 to 170 kilo dip. you have to be a master a level right and you've got to think like they're inches away from injury. Like that's that's how crucial the game is. Not that it's a, a like they're going to get injured, but one one mistake you can get injured at these these heavy weights. You have to know how to program. You know how you you need to know a lot of stuff. But that's experience. Experience can only teach you that. You can't just say to a coach, right? I'm new to calisthenics. I want to go to this competition. It doesn't make sense. Like you can build up to it in like, but you need you need a lot of experience. And it would probably help if you have a lot of experience yourself before even getting coached. Like you've done calisthenics for a few years. Mm. Most people that do calisthenics, they they, you know, as an example, let's say you have a, a, a regular gym goer who is doing you no know, some heavy benching, and he's seen on Instagram this guy does 140 kilo dip. Most likely, of course, he's in he has the confidence to just put on some weight. He's never even done a dip. They just put on a, you know, 80 to 100 kilo and they try a dip and they could, you could tear something. It's a complete different movement pattern. There's so many things you're doing different to a bench or whatever, you know, so this, even a bit more advanced people who do a different kind of training will do that. So it's prevalent. It's, it's very prevalent that most people don't take into account experience is, is, is key. Like that is what the top guys have and that's why they're the best. On the other hand, um, what I also always strongly recommend is for those who, who think they want to join a competition, I would always say, yeah, if you're already on a certain level, go in and do it for your first time. But please don't expect yourself to win it. That's, that's the thing. I, I would love to see more people on a competition just to see if, if this is what you want to do and what you want to specialize on. And is this the community you want, to, you want to be part of? You know, that's that's something people very much underestimate here. Um, that the first thing you do is check it out. Do that, and then we will see. I see that with a lot of clients of mine. They say, yeah, I would, I would love to do a competition. I'm like, yeah, we can do that. I'm definitely going to prepare you for a competition as I'm pretty good at preparing people for competition but I, I never say yeah specialize yourself on that for the rest of your life without even knowing what's going on here what this will take from you you know that's something a lot of people may, really don't don't get I'm, I'm right now I'm at I turned 30 as you <laughs> we're the old dogs and um, yeah yeah you, you know how long I'm, I'm taking people to competitions that's like seven years now i'm bringing people yeah. for seven years do you know how many of them stayed for the seven years one. Oh yeah i was about to say three yeah three maybe that's, three yeah that's what it's that tells you all. it's yeah. dave. you know you still know dave dave goes peace more you know and he's yeah 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 he's the one who did competitions in 2014 i, re I remember him he and i remember him in wetzlar yeah, he, he, he was a beast then. That was 2013. He was, yeah, 2014, I think. That, that 14, was sorry. Yeah. Years ago. That's years he ago. Strong. He's still he one was of the in the world. Endurance king. Like, he could just, I mean, it's, he's one of them kind of guys. Like, the more he does, the more the more easier training is getting. So it's like he's like the final boss, you know? The more you, you attack him, he just doesn't die. He keeps getting stronger. You're like, oh, God. Damn, someone help this guy, man. I mean, yeah, but no, 100%, Nick, I think um, another one is like, did you see the competition, the UK competition that Lee Wade Turner held in the in the UK? Did you see? Um, I, I didn't, um, I don't remember what, what the competition was, but I know they had goblet squat with 32 or, or I think 20 or 30 kilo plus a vest. I know there was push-ups, weighted dips muscle ups one of the things is 
in that competition, as an example, is that the double swing muscle up, right? You, you see when they like move forward, move back, move forward and move back. That is the point. The, the point of that uh, muscle up is that elite people will be able to double their reps with that. Because as an example, this is one thing that most people don't realize with muscle ups is like, when, when you look at those muscle ups that most people done, I'd say 99% of them people cheated on their muscle ups. Because they're, they're, that's a cheating in terms of, there is no rule of, of cheating, right? But to make it easier for yourself, you can see it because once they hit that forward position, you know, when they swing and they don't get to that, that swing point and then do a muscle up, they swing to the point, they move back and then they do a muscle up. So it's kind of like they wrote, they move around the bar. Mm-hmm. So that, that, that methodology was the first one I'd seen maybe the first one, I'm not sure, but doing that double swing muscle up as an example, that is like, you can just get away with so many reps with that. I don't class that as like, who am I to say? Because I don't even do muscle ups anymore, right? But I think I have a good enough experience doing them. I don't think that is classed as a strict muscle up. In my opinion, that is not a strict muscle up. To put that in, and that's no, that's no, no, um, nothing bad about the competition in general, or whoever organised it. I'm just saying in general, that's the first time I've seen that. But if I was hosting a competition, I was preparing for this and choosing movements, I would never choose a double swing muscle up because that means elite people can just double up their reps. It just, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't understand why that was in there. You know what? Think of the time, how, how, because in 2017, there yes. was the first competition in the UK that was held by, by Lee. I think you remember that one. Um, yes, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was in the O2 arena. It was me, Solo and Theo. Yeah. Uh, we, was, we was kind of judging it or something like this, yeah. I think he, he asked you to judge it. There was... That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was 2016. I think 2016. Yeah, 2016. 100. Yeah, 2016. And at that time, I, th- I think we already talked about exactly this muscle up style, and we all agreed on yeah, that's right now. It's the best idea to do it. So, especially when it comes to a lot of reps, because we know they're gonna gonna completely hang out. And by the time now, like I mean, today it's like nearly four years later five to four, four years later. Yeah. We know, okay, it's not the best way. And that's, that's also something super interesting, how much the sport grew, how much we, we've grown up with, with the sport and how much more we know now about all these little small detailed things. Because I remember how we talked about that and how much I hated this double swing thing because it's so hard. On the other hand, we really have to say that because you have not that bounce when you come back, you know? Oh, no, that's what I mean. For elite for elite level guys who can do muscle-ups, this is a lot easier because they can use that rotation when they're pulling back to start pulling up, right? So it's a give-and-take situation. For beginners, yeah, it's harder because you have to hang on the bar a lot more. You need that extra grip strength, right? Mm. But for elite guys who can do muscle-ups all day, you're giving them the gold straight away because – a beginner is obviously going to utilize that swing back as he's swinging back to then muscle up. Right. I don't know if you remember, there was also this time when, when muscle ups, they were doing the box muscle ups. Remember when there was like something in front where you couldn't go past that point. I think, I think realistically that is the hardest way to do muscle ups, but I think there's not many people that can do their muscle ups correctly. Right. So therefore you can't put them in competitions. You're only going to get the most elite guys being able to even do them. The point with the double swing muscle up is that you're going to get beginners be able to at least get a few reps out of it. But the point is the strictness of that muscle up there. I don't think you can get strict on that muscle up is just unless the athlete wants to be, but why would you, when you want to, why, when you want to win, you'd use every advantage, right. By pulling back. I'm, I'm not sure if you know what I mean. Like when you, when you pull forward and you're swinging back as you're swinging back, if you do a muscle up, it's so much easier for an elite level guy. You could go all day like that. Yeah, but I would, right. 
You see, there's a little difference on how, how tall you are. The taller you are, the more you have to swing forward. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I mean. Like, and it, and and that that goes to show you is like most most guys who are doing calisthenics, I'd say around roughly my height or a little bit taller, five seven to five nine. What's maybe that? you get odd five foot seven to about five foot nine or ten, maybe right. What's you don't get. Pardon. What's that in centimeters? Uh, I'm not. I'm not too sure. Let me. Uh, let me check. But. Uh, 17, something like that. Five foot seven in one minute. I think I think it is one one seventy something around that that height. Yeah, one 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 seventy exactly. Five foot seven. So I'm five seven. I think that's a big reason why I was good at muscle ups. Look how look how short I am. Yeah. You know, so you 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 know, and 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 that takes me to another point. A little bit off topic, but. Sometimes you have to work with what your body is designed for. You know, sometimes, you know, you do look at really tall guys who want to get into calisthenics. And the first thing I say to them, you can do it. It's just going to take you a little bit longer. It's just going to take you maybe a little bit longer. You know, it's the equivalent of someone trying to say, well, I want to learn plant um, front lever at like six foot three. It's not saying you can't do it. It just, those long levers ain't going to help you in this kind of field, right? You're better off training something which you know you're gonna i don't know maybe have bigger strides or i don't know something you know <laughs> so that that just goes to show you like short people yeah they do excel if you look at most guys who do calisthenics they are roughly my height or a little bit taller or shorter you're looking at about five seven to five ten people above that they gotta work extra hard i, I can tell you that you know i'm um... I'm 102 kg right now. I'm one one meter 86 big, tall. Well, six I'm, foot. You must be six something, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm working on my front lever right now, and yeah, oh, it will take me years. Years. And I'm I'm good with that. I'm, that's a completely okay because I'm doing this this step away from this specialization into waste calisthenics, um, you know, I was very, with, with a very wide base, you know that. <laughs> and very, very, very wide base. That's the best way to be. And from there, I went into the specialization for the weighted calisthenics. And from there, I took myself out when this whole Corona thing started. I was like, well, okay. Um, time to review my own training again and I'm, I'm i'm still doing my deadlifts i'm doing my squats and all that stuff but for upper body it's mostly really pure calisthenic stuff like handstand push-ups front lever pull-ups and stuff like that completely raw calisthenic stuff because that's that's the where i i lack the most you know when i see it from a complete level and that's something a lot of people also don't, maybe they don't see it in my way, but I always look at where I'm just shit at. And what do I need to change that? No, I think that's, I think we, me and you have always had that, right? I think you're, we, we understand you're only as strong as your weakest link. That is really, you know, we're always working our weaknesses. So, I do get a lot of people always ask me still, like, oh, why don't you do weighted muscle ups and calisthenics? I'm like, to be honest, bro, I haven't, I don't, first of all, I don't have much of a passion for it anymore. There was a time I had passion for it. That is obviously my first love of training was calisthenics. I loved calisthenics and I still do. I still do a bit of calisthenics in terms of like my pull ups and dips. And I try some muscle ups here and there, right? But there isn't, there isn't that spark anymore, right? But at the end of the day, I also had got to a level where I thought, okay, I pretty much can't do anything more. This is as much as my body allows me to do. I'm pretty much happy with this level. Time to work on some proper weaknesses now. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so that, that is the thing. Like once you're good at something, just like throw it away. Don't expect to be as good at it when you go back, learn to be able to do at least 50% of it. Right. So like, I think I was one of the first people to do a 32 kilo muscle up on a straight bar clean. One of the first people at that time, right? 
and this is not even long ago so I think a lot of people do it now but I think I was one of the first people to do it I think the only people that done it at this point were myself and Vadim Olenik we were the in your weight class in Germany in my weight you know you know just to tell you that in your weight class which is um, below 80 it comes from yeah. 80. Uh, 72 or 73 to 80 would be your weight class. There's not a single one in the German speaking area who can do a 32 kg. Well, well, that's what I mean. I was 70 kilo when I'd done that, right? And I was younger. I was, the training was different. There was different time of training. There was training around different people, had different motivation, had different goals. The beauty of training is that you have to learn to like get out of your comfort zone. If you're good at something, once you've kind of, yeah, there is a right to say it. I did master muscle ups. I can, I can officially say I'm one of the only people that had mastered a straight bar muscle up. There's many people that can do muscle ups. I don't think many people have mastered a muscle up. I think I was, I mastered the muscle up. And, and the, the thing is, I always knew what, like once I'd done that 32 kilo muscle up, Mind you, I didn't even train for it. I just hit it. This is about six or seven years ago. So you can imagine how long before that I was training. I'd never touched a weighted muscle-up after that. I'd given up. I'd stopped training my muscle-ups. There was no point. So now I have people that I know people who can do planches for like 30 seconds to a minute. And I just think, okay, you can do it. But you have to sometimes learn to let go of that and be able to just hold it for like five seconds now, but work on other stuff. Like you still can do it, but you can't do as much of it. So at the moment, like you, you will probably, I would struggle doing like five, I, I, I would just about be able to hit right now five rounds of five body weight muscle ups. That's, that's, but I, I'm okay with that. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, I'm okay. I, I've done my time with muscle-ups. I do it now just as a skill in terms of like, oh, it's pretty cool. I can still do like three to five muscle-ups, but I have no, no uh, love for doing that kind of stuff anymore. There is no like, I just don't, I don't have anything to do with it, right? So it's not a part of my identity when it comes to training. Yes, that was a part of my identity. Oh yeah, I used to be able to do muscle-ups like this, like that. And I was a big advocate for clean muscle-ups. So, yeah right so but now you know you're it, it's changed i don't I, i'm 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 still light compared to a lot of people but i'm a lot heavier than where i was so i'm i'm not um that's not my goal of training but learning to let go of certain things but knowing when to attack your weaknesses is the way most people sh should train but you do not see that why social media people want to show what they're really good at how many people do they show where you fuck up one of your back squats or your, your deadlifts and you can't lift it right that's the point like you, you you're gonna have fails and stuff in general and stuff you're gonna fail your reps and sets yeah one day you feel like shit you can't be bothered to train this is gonna happen but i think the real real training philosophy is like really definitely work identifying your weaknesses and working on them that is a big thing like most people like look at calisthenics where we first started off with talking about today is that calisthenics is one of them things where this whole new way of thinking has been adopted by thinking squats are bad deadlifts are bad if you're not doing body weight only you're bad mm -hmm. that that is a natural thing what most people say and it's going to be a natural thing which they get out of as well they're all going to turn to <laughs> it <laughs> It's, I know it's, it's quite bad to say, but it's kind of like veganism. You're going to have a little time of being a vegan, but then you're always going to go back to meat. <laughs> yeah, that's sorry. That's, there might be some vegans listening, but it was just the, you know, don't take it to heart. <laughs> you know, the thing with that is a lot of people love, especially when it comes to beginning something, you really want to be a hardliner on something. And then over the time you learn, okay, well, if I really want to be good at something, I probably have to implement something else, which just kills my hard line on the nest here. <laughs> and um, just for the sake of, of the bigger picture. And that's the thing here, take a step back. And look at the bigger picture is something that I would recommend for most people when it comes, especially to training philosophies and stepping away from this 
very strict thinking of this is the way training has to look like. Like everybody yeah. is with this. For an example, as you said in the beginning with the CrossFit um, pull-ups, you know why they are doing the kipping muscle-ups? Because the rule in the CrossFit competition is straight arm, chin over the bar. If there yeah. is do 20 pull-ups, straight arm and chin over the bar in the competition, and you have to do that faster than the other one next to you. Yeah. You try to make up a technique that gives you the, the chance to make this faster than the other one. And the kipping technique, there is a technique behind that, which is actually hard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do that because I wanna win the competition. And that's the thing yeah. you have to view this from a bigger point of view. People in CrossFit are doing keeping pull-ups, not for the sake of getting strong, but for the sake of winning a competition. And that's called time. And they still do strict pull-ups in their normal training. Yeah, yeah. But they also have to train this skill, you know? And that's yeah, something yeah. a lot of people misunderstand when it comes to that stuff. And on the other hand, it also teaches us the variety of, of how you can do things is so yeah. much bigger than just this one dimension of how people view things. You can do dips in so many ways. You can do pull-ups oh, yeah. in so many ways. How many people are like, oh, don't do chin-ups. Pull-ups are so much better. No, it's just a different thing. No, 100%. I mean, I follow I follow one, this one guy um, on Instagram, and uh, I think he's a, he's a firefighter. He's a... Uh, 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 an uh, uh, MMA guy, but he also does really cool style of training. So when he's like doing calisthenics, he's very explosive. Like he'll do, you know, who's who's to say that's right or wrong? There is different philosophies, and each person holds of their own mind, right? But this guy does some really like explode. Of course, he's very like he's very explosive, man. Like he'll do ladder push ups, you know, like with the ladder, but he'll do like plyometric jumping and. But it works good for his fighting as well. He's very explosive. You know, he does like clapping, but his dips are really like explosive. Then he'll do like some strong man. He'll do like, he'll he'll walk backwards with a sled, but he'll hold an Atlas stone. He'll, sh he'll, he'll really grab the Atlas stone at the same time. But like his style is like, you don't see many people doing his style. And his style is just so like different and cool. Like that's the point. Like I think when we when we spoke about like if you mo look at most beginners they they see the influencers they do see the guys that are doing 50 kilo dips uh sorry like 100 kilo dips and whatever right like these big numbers that is a specialization that is a skill itself you have to know how to put the you know learning learning the, how much the the weight should hang from your ball sack is a skill itself <laughs> right you you want to put the belt on there's a certain way to put the belt on there's a you know you're right there's there's a, that's a skill there is so much more to training it's like when people put themselves in the box yeah that's great if you want to specialize and go into competition that's great but that's not always going to last you might get bored of that in three years and you might go to the next style of training that is what training is about you have to keep going to the next thing and keep learning right go to and do try and try and different things yep some people can tr do the same thing every year. Like you get powerlifters that you were powerlifted from the age that they were 15 to the age that they're 50, right? Mm -hmm. they, they stick to powerlifting. They're great at it. And that's what they love. So there is different. But then again, powerlifting, squat bench dead in, they might do so much more sled work with it. They might do pull-ups. There's so many more things they're doing involved with that. It's not just like they're just doing squat bench dead three days, uh, three three times five times a week for three exercises of the same things every week they're not doing that they're doing so much more it just doesn't look like it mm -hmm. right so a, a, a big thing is like most beginners don't understand that there is so much more to do in in physical training just change it up i don't know make some farmers walks and walk for like accumulate five to ten minute walk with 100 kilo just for grip and just for overall strength just do that and that's a training session itself you know there's so many different things to be doing that's a that's a that's a big thing i think that that point brings me back to like calisthenics that original calisthenics that was the beauty of calisthenics it was 
when I was training, we didn't, there was no routine. There was no programming. You learned to do as much as you wanted to do. And then you come off and that's it. And you go home. All right. But the, the point is like, there was different points of calisthenics. There was like freestyle. There was weighted reps and sets. There was body weight reps and sets. There was statics. And then you could combine them all as well. At the same time, you could, that was a bit, I don't think you see, I don't, I don't see that anymore. That, that, that era of calisthenics, in my opinion, was the beauty of calisthenics. I think that is gone. That is gone. I mean, you only see most people now make up these kind of moves or skills when they're doing statics. So as an example, when you see someone doing a planche nowadays, the new planche may be on fingers and then they drop down to their hands and then they have the dramatic music kicking like they're, you know 300 rise of a spartan kicks in or something you know <laughs> and it's just dramatic and you think okay it's a fucking static dude chill out it's just a hold i could just hold a body weight squat against the wall and just do that for five minutes and it's the same kind of thing really so there's so much more to train I mean, statics people do statics so much and you think there's so much more to training you're like okay you can do some statics just do something else now you know so it's like and then you get people who want to do one arm pull-ups and i'm like how much can you pull body weight like if i put a weight on you how much can you do actual pull-ups they're like 10 kilo i'm like bro you you're nowhere even near to even try to attempt one arm pull-ups you're going to rip your biceps so people look at all the flashy moves weighted dips heavy flashy you don't know what it takes to do a 140 kilo dip, right? They don't know what it takes to really do it. They think it's made for everyone. It's not. Unfortunately, it's not made for everyone. That level of extremity is not made for everyone. So beginners have to really, you know, you can specialize. You can specialize at certain times like yourself. Like you do, you're obviously not a beginner. You're an advanced elite level coach and athlete. But you have certain times of the year, right? I'm ready for competition. I need to specialize yeah that's it most people most people specialize throughout their whole training mm -hmm. that's what i'm trying to say it's like whether you're beginner or advanced that's not the, that's not a correct way to be it's just by you know you could as an example you could do like let's imagine this guy who's doing deadlifts and he specializes in deadlifts yeah he might specialize in deadlifts but he might do loads of rack pulls one week then he might be doing deficits they're like variations he might use a trap bar he might be then be doing farmers walks all right he might might be tr training different things at the same time in that skill mm -hmm. but most people when they do weighted dips it's just numbers it's just right i've lifted 80 kilo last week for five rounds five i'm going to add on 2.5 kilo and go for the five five next week i've done 82 point but right and just they think that is a methodology towards training most beginners so you can even get advanced people who can lift heavy amounts of weight with an a beginner's mindset in programming that's the ones who get injured yeah the thing with that that that's where we well wanted to go with that because the interesting part here is what is the takeaway people can can take from here is there is times in your training where you should specialize yes as an example, when I started specializing myself on purely weighted class senics and just doing the four lifts, I think that was by the end of 2018. And I did it until 2020. So pretty much specializing on like two years or something. Um, yeah. one and a half, something like that. And beforehand that, I did six years of, of a very wide variety of training. And the thing with that is I, I had no coach. So uh, for the first years of my training, and I, I would, if I look back into that, it is a two-sided word. On the one hand, that's very good to have the freedom to learn a lot about yourself during that time. But on the other hand, I made so many mistakes during that time, I could have avoided because it's it's not like 
you need to make mistakes to avoid them for the future because there are some <laughs> mistakes you just don't need to, to make. I think you can see that by yourself um, it, when you look back into that. Yeah? And you see it with, with clients as well. You know, I see so many clients of mine who are, after just a short time, so much better than me, so much stronger than me overall, especially when they start with a coach, that's super interesting. Um, but the, the very important part here is to understand you have got to build a wide variety of strength, especially in the beginning, which gives you all the stuff in there. Be able to squat some weight, be able to deadlift some weight, be able to move your body, do some pull-ups, do some muscle-ups. A muscle-up is a very basic thing, in my opinion. Um, learn a bodyweight muscle-up. Learn a handstand. That's a very basic thing to me. You know, and from there on, you can say, okay, I want to specialize on maybe this or that thing. Let's learn a one arm pull up or something because you already have a base of at least, I hate to say numbers, but at least half of your body weight in a pull up or something like that. You know, that if you can say, okay, I do have a proper wider base on things, I am able to do some farmers work and stuff like that. And from there on, you can specialize, yes, but it doesn't have to say, I'm going to specialize on this for the rest of my life because you, you will never do that, you know? I, I, of course, I thought that in 2019 that I'm going to be the weighted calisthenics guy for, my, for the rest of my life. I'm not. And as, a, as an old dog in, in, in training now, nearly coming for 10 years of training, I can tell you that things like that change all the time. Like your style of training will change every three to four years at least. Yes, but that doesn't mean you can't think in a very long-term way of training as I want to be the strongest version, the best version of myself by the end of this fall. When I'm like 80 and I look back on myself and I say I did the very best to get everything out of this, I was able to deadlift 300, doing a planche and all that stuff, you know? I was able to do all of that. And thinking of the, it in a longer, long-term thing, I think that will help a lot of people, especially when they think of, okay, I'm right now starting a journey. For the next five years, I'm just here to build my base. Build this fucking base. I, I, I can't tell you how much I tell that to people. Build your base, build the foundation, understand the principles of training, how much this will take from you, how much are you willing to give into training, because that's another thing. You're probably gonna learn that now as you have your first child. You probably don't have that much time for training now. And that's also okay. And it's, this is all such a bigger picture. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I hope you get my point here. No, hundred percent, bro. 100% get your point. I mean, since I had my boy as well, I think I, I was um I deducted my training and and only I well I only trained four days. I only trained four days a week. That's mm -hmm. all I trained. And it's probably only about 40 minutes to an hour. That's it. That's all it is. But I've learned obviously I've made so many mistakes in my time of training this and the same as you, I sometimes think if I had a coach when I was young, I would have been way better. But then again, I'm kind of glad I didn't because I'm quite crazy. And if I had kept pushing myself, maybe I would have broken myself at the same time. So it's kind of good that I stayed a weakling as long as I did. Right. The best, the best thing about it is that like you, if you, if you have that mindset where you kind of attack, you know, you, you don't doubt yourself when you're in that environment, when you train, you can break yourself because there's no stopping, right? So sometimes good thinking about, oh, I wish I had a coach. And then I think, mate, it's a good thing I didn't. For me personally, it was a good thing that I didn't because I did make my own mistakes. And now I, same as you see, all my clients making unbelievable progress just by, they don't have to make the mistakes. Just listen to me. I've made all the mistakes, that's the <laughs> right? That's why, that's, that's why I've got the experience in coaching now because I've made so many mistakes and I know what's right and wrong. So my clients just skip kind of years of without making mistakes 
but they still have to learn the graph. They still have to understand that base level is everything. You have to have a massive foundation of strength. You have to also listen. If you're, to, if you're on programming, a big mistake that you see so many people make and because they get caught up in, in their, you know, they feel good and they go off program and you think, dude, just listen. If you're going to get coached, just do the set, do the things that I'm telling you. Yeah. If you feel good, just m- maybe one of the sets, you can just, you know, push yourself a little bit, but then I've seen some people go completely off program. They do not look at the weight. They will just be like, okay, no, I'm going to do my own weight. Mm-hmm. And then they pay the price for it in a few months. They feel absolutely destroyed because they just keep pushing the weight. And I don't even know until what they update me. I'm like, dude, what have you been doing all that time? Right. So why have you been doing that? Building a foundation is great. Having a coach, if you can get a coach, that's, that's a massive difference. You, you, you save many years. You ain't, first of all, you're not going to get injured. If you listen to your coach, you, ain't, you probably won't get injured. Most likely they know how to you know, manage your fatigue, how you do, how you're doing. Most beginners don't know how to do that. If they're having a nine to five, every day and they're doing hard work labor and they're trying to come home and break themselves in the gym these are things into account that coach should take and that's what they prioritize not just by thinking oh the guy's a beginner he should be able to squat 70 kilo german volume training straight away the guy doesn't even know how to squat as an example right so they'll have to learn technique there's so many things to take into account if you don't have a coach you wouldn't think of these things you would just think right i'm coming home from hard days worth of work and i'm just gonna go I don't know what to warm up and just to start squatting. And that's when people do really hurt themselves. So we've made them, you know, we that, we didn't really make massive mistakes in terms of getting injured, but there's so many factors to take into account that coaching is such a great thing that nowadays most people do have coaches. It's a great thing to have. A coach is a great thing to have. I have a few guys that are quite elite level. Um, I, I think about five or six like elite level guys, what I would class as elite now. Mm. Right, just because yeah they might not be elite in numbers as as just elite in numbers but they learn like they understand at the start when they started training that same mindset oh i love training I'll, i'll train so much a day they learn that if they don't feel comfortable in the day they just take a day off there's nothing wrong with it just take a day off doesn't matter if you've had a hard day of work or something happened in your family the point of training is to be able to adapt and be able to like not think of training i teach all my clients the same thing that i spent years learning only think about your training when you're training if you come out when you come out of the gym just get on with life and what you have to do your time for training is that hour stick to it yeah you might have some thoughts about, but that person the same basic beginner that i've trained so many of them in person online and whatever they they will train for an hour they go home they'll train again and they can't stop thinking about training and nonstop. That's when you, that's when you're in that phase of your, you think you're in your prime, but re- you're really in your prime when your mental capacity, like the way you think is established as well as your physical, right? Like how much you can physically take and how much you can mentally, like you can prioritize things properly. You make so much more progress. You're like you, you wouldn't even believe that the, the, sorry, the beginners wouldn't even believe that, right? Until they actually do it. So I think another thing is most beginners take that are too serious. They're way too serious. You have to enjoy it sometimes as well, right? You have to like, sometimes it's because they see the, the weights and the heavy lifting, they think that is the game. But you have to, you know, all those guys that you see that are elite level, at one time of the training, they were enjoying it. <laughs> they were enjoying it. And they, they might still enjoy it, but in competition phases, it's not really enjoyment. You're competing, you're doing different stuff, right? But there was times that most people, the, the most elite guys that you see doing street lifting now, I know the, them guys and I've seen them get to that level they're at. And I remember they're training five, six years ago. They were enjoy. there's a different style. Like you said, they've, they trained four years of something. Next four years, they're going to the next thing. The next four years, they go maybe to the next thing, right? So it's just constant rotation. Like you got to keep moving on. You just got to keep moving on. That's it. That's it. I love that. I love this conversation with you all the time. I think that's that's good to 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 end it here, <laughs> as we're having a very long episode right here, guys. If you like to 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 listen to more of these lovely conversations of us just let us know in the comments or um tag us in the in the stories i would love to see that 
Um, put it put it on your story. Take a screenshot. Put it on your story. Let us know how you how you enjoyed this this episode. And um, if you want to get in touch with Ranjit, I think you can catch him on Instagram. Ranjit Bachu. Is that right? Don't contact me, guys. I want to be left alone. <laughs> I'll contact him. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, so it's Ran- Ranjit Singh Bachu on Instagram. And um, yeah, it's just, uh, I've been on Instagram for a while. I don't really use it as much anymore for posting videos and stuff, more just for my clients. But yeah, have a, have a, uh, feel free to look there and have a little check out what I do. That's cool. All right. For everyone who likes this podcast, feel free to do subscribe, share it, and listen to some more of the episodes. I think we're trying to bring you some more value here. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it, and thank you so much for listening. Ranjit, so much. Such, su- su- such a good time always to have with you these conversations, and uh, thank you so much for, for being here. And um, i catch you catch you probably later as I actually re- expect everyone to say we want him back. <laughs> That was a great, great talk with you, Nick, as usual. Uh, thanks for having me on. And uh, hopefully in the new year, we'll, I'll catch you again. We can have another discussion about training. Absolutely. Merry Christmas and a happy new year to you. See you later.